Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphone Show, and today we're gonna to take a look at the Final Audio D8000 Pro. This is a player magnetic over-ear open back headphone that comes in right at around $4,300. So this is a very high-end flagship headphone from Final Audio. Let's take a look. Just like with my other reviews, we're gonna go through the build quality, design and comfort. We'll talk about detail retrieval, speed, dynamic, soundstage, imaging, and timbre. We'll talk about frequency response and tonal balance, give a couple comparisons, and then ultimately decide whether or not it's worth it. Now, this is a headphone that I've had the luxury of revisiting after having previously you know, evaluated uh, one as well. And so I already have a general sense of this headphone from before, and I wanted to you know, see if it still kind of holds up in the context of many of these other uh, you know, flagship planar magnetic headphones that I've reviewed since, like the Hi-Fi Man's so Zvara and the Abyss Diana Phi and you know some of these other ones that are quite expensive. I'm also going to be leaving my EQ profile for this headphone, um, so stick around to the end of the video if you guys want to see that. Um, I've done this in conjunction with using the Gross standardized measurement rig, so I'll post both the before and after measurements. But in any case, let's begin by talking about the build quality, design, and comfort. And yes, the build quality here is outstanding. It has this sort of almost like steampunkish kind of look to it. I think it looks pretty cool actually, especially with this silver. You can see it's this kind of almost shiny white silver look. The whole cup moves on these pieces that sort of slides up and down and then it also has some swivel all the way around like this. I really like this design. I think it's quite cool and it is effective. Uh, if I put it on, it has, again, a, a very fun kind of almost, yeah, like steampunkish look to it. So I think I heard somebody describe this as looking like a tractor, which is kind of fun. There are two main criticisms that I have of the design with this headphone. The first is that the cups are circular and they're not oval shaped and our ears aren't round like this. So I do find that the opening for the pads is just not long enough to fit my ears because uh, I do have slightly larger than average ears. If you have smaller ears, this might not be much of an issue. Um, and the other complaint I have is that because this headphone is not particularly light, this is over 500 grams. This headband piece, I feel just doesn't have enough padding to be able to accommodate that. So it's not the most comfortable headphone in the world to wear. I would have liked to see instead, or maybe in future models, a suspension style headband that does a little bit better job of distributing the weight across the top. I think also because the angle for, you know, how this how this contours to your head is just a little bit on the tight side for my head, but you might not have a problem with that either. Um, the clamp on this though isn't particularly, you know, intense. I don't have any issues with that. And I do have a larger than average head as well. So I think for most people that'll be fine. Now there is one other thing we gotta talk about before we get into the sound, and it's that the cable for this headphone, at least the one that has the quarter inch termination, is particularly awful. Now it's not super stiff, it is you know reasonably bendy, it's not like one of the Focal cables that really keeps its shape, um, but the biggest problem with this is that it's really, really heavy. Um, and this actually drags the headphone down at such an awkward angle for me that it makes it less comfortable than the much heavier Odyssey LCD XC that I uh, also you know wear for long periods of time on a regular basis. Now with the D8000 Pro that do also give you another cable, this is the second cable that they give you and it's much, much lighter, it's much better. So, uh, you know, I like this cable a lot more, um, but keep in mind, this does use a regular 3.5 millimeter termination. So, you know, you'd use a, an adapter with this one. Um, and also, is it just me or like, this looks also really thick. So, I, you know, the cables I think overall could be improved, but thankfully the headphone isn't particularly difficult to drive. You can drive this off of a digital audio player and it's not really a problem. They even give you a carrying case if you want this to be portable. So you could do that. If you want to rock it out in public, you can do that, you know, hop on a bus. I wouldn't, but you, you can do that. Now let's talk about how this headphone sounds. For detail retrieval and image clarity and the ability to sort of see the whole picture of the music, the Final Audio D8000 Pro is remarkably good. This is right up there with some of the very best that I've heard. It's not on the same level as the Susvara, and for my brief impressions, I think probably the AB1266 TC is probably a little bit better as well. Um, but you know, to my ear, this this competes in that same summit category there for the very best out there. Of that sort of summit category, there are some that are on the lower end and some that are on the higher end. I think the D8000 Pro is kind of like leaning slightly more towards the lower end. For speed, I find the final D8000 Pro to be sufficiently fast. It's not the fastest that I've ever heard, and I actually do think that the Abyss Diana Phi and AB1266TC were faster than this. 
uh, as far as that sort of like initial leading edge and that snappiness. But on the whole, this is quite good. And I, you know, I love that quality about high-end headphones, especially planar magnetics. So yeah, it competes there as well. For dynamics, or at least macro dynamics, that sort of punch and, you know, slam quality that you get, uh, this actually is really good as well. It's not quite on the level of, again, some of those highly excursive dynamic driver headphones from Focal, like the Focal Utopia. And it's also probably not on the level of the LCD4. I actually just recently had one in. And yeah, the LCD4 does still slam a little harder than this. But for a planar magnetic headphone um, that does, they don't usually have as much slam there. This does reasonably well. I think it's also quite a bit better than, you know, the HD1000 SE. Fairly close to that of the Hi-Fi Man Sosvara for, for dynamics, for macro dynamics. So definitely a decent performer for dynamics as well. For Soundstage and imaging, this isn't the most spacious presentation out there, but the separation quality is still fantastic and right up there once again with the very best of them. And to describe the stage a little bit, it is it is a little bit more in front of me uh, than you know the typical sort of all around me kind of thing. Uh, so this is more like you're kind of sitting in a concert. At least that's how I hear this. You know, some headphones, they have the center image completely gone or collapsed and it just sort of falls in on me. When I hear a pan from, you know, left to right, uh, it, it does have a more even presentation across the front of the stage. So I don't have too many issues with the sound stage or imaging here. Uh, it all sounds really, really good to me. And then for timbre, this is also quite good. You know, it doesn't have, again, the dry quality that some of those Hi-Fi Man plane airs do have. And, it, but it's also not on the level of that sort of euphonic quality that some of the uh, Odysseys have. And this also really isn't helped by the frequency response because this is a little bit brighter leaning. But when you EQ this, I found that the timbre here was reasonably natural sounding to me. And I didn't have any issues with, with that. Um, of course, it does still sound like a planar, so it has that kind of plucked quality. I know somewhere out there Metal 571 is laughing at me. But as far as material or transducer related timbre, I don't think this has anything distinctly recognizable about it, at least not in any negative way. Now, let's look at the frequency response and tonal balance. And this is, again, it's a little bit brighter, um, a little more counterclockwise leaning. And just so you guys know, if you guys want to learn more about measurements and frequency response and how all this stuff works, I've actually done a video on that that I will leave linked below as well. And there's a whole long article on that that you guys can check out as well. So if none of this is making any sense, check that stuff out and hopefully that will help you uh, make sense of this a little bit better. For the bass, like I mentioned, this is very, very well extended. This extends all the way down, you know, to 30 hertz and past the range of human hearing. Now, with that said, it does still sit a little bit lower than, you know, the preferred Harman bass shelf there. So that is something that I do EQ and we'll get into that. But, uh, you know, for the most part, the bass extension here is quite good as we would expect from a flagship planar. Uh, it's just a little bit lower. It sits a little bit lower than I think uh, people would, you know, normally prefer. For the mids, there are no issues with the tonal balance here. It generally follows this Harman combined reference curve that I'm using. But the one thing to note is that the upper mids, like around 3K, are withdrawn uh, quite a bit here uh, in favor of, you know, the, the 4K, 5K hertz stuff. And this is a little bit odd because it's not like there isn't ear related gain that's going on here like you generally want there to be an elevation here because that's where your ear is amplifying certain frequencies but in the case of the d8000 pro it's sort of just shifted everything upwards a little bit more to the higher frequencies and i think this is again fine for certain genres and some people may prefer this for those genres but for my preferences, I do prefer more 3K Hertz energy there. So I do boost that up as well. And then, uh, you know, above that, once we start getting into the lower treble, uh, things are a little bit on the intense side for my taste with uh, the, the D8000 Pro. Uh, so I do also kind of pull that stuff back a little bit as well. Now it's not to the level of being fatiguing or anything like that. The overall balance is actually excellent on this. Um, and it doesn't have any weird issues like where the you know upper treble is completely you know overdone with crazy splash and sizzle. And if you'll notice, you know, there are the appropriate dips that should be there around 9K Hertz with this headphone. Uh, this, you actually want there to be a dip there um, because that's where there's uh, the, the concha interaction going on and this headphone does have it so uh, it, you know the balance there overall it, it's all very you know carefully done and tastefully done and it makes sense what they're doing here it's just that you know there's a little bit more emphasis to that region and I think it wouldn't have been as you know noticeably emphasized if there were a little bit more 3k hertz uh, energy there but nonetheless the overall balance for this is fine it's just that occasionally this means it comes across a little bit shrill and a little bit biting 
for certain uh, recordings. Now, not all recordings. Once again, I I listen to a lot of jazz and acoustic and classical music, and for most of that stuff, this is totally fine. Like this this default t- tuning here is great. But because I also listen to a lot of garbage, I also do EQ this headphone. I essentially add a little bit of bass energy. I add some 3K Hertz energy, and then I you know, pull the treble back a little bit um, to make this a little bit more in line with this target because I do like the way this target sounds. Uh, but that's just my personal preference. You know, If you guys are you know, more into acoustic and jazz and that kind of stuff, you may be totally fine with the default tonal balance here. I just find it ends up being a little bit more focused towards the resonant harmonics there you know around five six k hertz um and not so much the the fundamental tone for certain instruments again not all instruments because this has decent mid-range presence below that 3k hertz so that's not really that much of an issue just there's a little bit of a, a hollowness there for certain vocals occasionally um, so you can just sort of fill that in a little bit to your preference and uh, and that'll that'll help with that. But before getting into the EQ profile here, let me just do a couple of comparisons uh, compared to the Hi-Fi Man Sosvara. Yeah, the Hi-Fi Man Sosvara I think is still better than the D8000 Pro because not only is it lighter and more comfortable, it's also got, I think, a little bit better detail retrieval and also the tonal balance on the Hi-Fi Man Sosvara is a little bit more to my preference. It's a little bit more balance there for the for the upper mids and the mids in general i think there's some people who say this as far has a little bit too much 7k hertz and i can understand that for me i don't have that much of an issue with it compared to the odyssey lcd4 I do find that the Final Audio D8000 Pro competes in many of the technical aspects that really matter, like detail, and maybe not quite on the same level, but I do think for soundstage, the D8000 Pro is maybe a little bit better. Uh, but then also, importantly, the tonal balance on the D8000 Pro is definitely better than that of the LCD4, at least for the LCD4s that I've evaluated. Um, you know, this has ear gain going on in it. The LCD4, at least on most units, is quite withdrawn there in the upper mids around, you know, like 4K. And then the air regions like 11, 12K Hertz and above, it's quite emphasized and elevated. So you have this sort of odd tonal imbalance going on where you don't get the fundamental tone as strongly for cymbal hits, but you get the splash and sizzle that's overdone a little bit. So uh, at least from the ones that I've evaluated, the tonal balance there, it was a little bit disjointed and, you know, I wouldn't really recommend recommend that without EQ. Compared to the Abyss Diana 5, both with and without the DMS mod, the tonal balance of that one also I think was one that, at least for my taste, requires EQ because it has a bit of that sort of 10k hertz shimmer going on. Um, thankfully that one's not that difficult to EQ, you just sort of drop 10k hertz with a narrow, uh, narrow Q value there um, and then it sounds pretty good. The nice thing about the D8000 Pro is that its default tonality does drop in the, in the region where it should, like 9 and 10k hertz. Uh, I think on this one it's actually closer to 9k hertz but that's it's a good thing and that means that you don't get that sort of odd shimmering characteristic going on for technicalities yeah it's very close it's interesting because i almost want to give the detail edge in the mids to the abyss diana phi um, but i think it's it's very very close and for the base i might even give the edge to the uh D8000 Pro for detail. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, the benefit of the Abyss Diana 5 is that it is very light uh, compared to other planar magnetic headphones, at least the high-end ones, and it's reasonably comfortable when you use the DMS uh, pad mod. So I think it would be, if you're, if you're comfortable doing EQ, that one might be worth choosing over the D8000 Pro. But if you're not comfortable doing EQ, I would definitely pick the D8000 Pro over that one. And lastly, compared to the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 SE, which is also a fairly counterclockwise tilted and bright leaning uh, planar magnetic headphone that's also got crazy detail retrieval. I do think that the balance overall for the D8000 Pro is quite a bit better because the, at least on the unit that I evaluated, for the HE1000 SE, it was also quite unbalanced there in the treble. It had a very odd kind of shimmering characteristic going on. It's interesting, when I went to Can Jam in New York this past year, I, I listened to an HE1000 SE that was on a tube amp from the guys at Oris Audio, and it completely fixed that tonal balance issue that I was having with uh, with the HE1000 SE off of a solid state amp. So uh, it was interesting to hear that off of a you know different range of equipment. So maybe that won't be an issue for you. And then in that case, you know the tonal balance there may actually be more agreeable if you can get the right source pairing for it. But by default, you know off of a solid state linear amplifier, the the D8000 Pro I think has a better tonal balance. For technical performance, uh, the same thing, the D8000 Pro I think has better dynamics and the detail retrieval is similar, but then the soundstage isn't quite as uh, separated and 
you know, extreme as uh, on, on, you know, those egg-shaped Hi-Fi Man headphones that do a really good job there. So, you know, the image placement might be a little bit more distinct on the HE1000 SE, but for the other technical aspects, the D8000 Pro, I think, is the, is the winner. And also for tonal balance, the... Uh, D8000 Pro is also the winner. Now, let me jump into my EQ profile here for this headphone. So the first thing I do is I boost the bass by a little bit, and I do give this quite a bit of a shelf to get it to match the, or get fairly close to the Harman combined target, which uses the Harman 2013 bass. And the reason for this is because the D8000 Pro can easily handle it. And so I boost the bass by, you know, a couple dB there, and I add a shelf that comes down right at around, uh, you know, 150 hertz. Um, this makes this headphone a little bit more fun there in the bass for a wider range of genres. And then there was a little bit of a dip there in the mids around 500 hertz. This isn't really necessary to do. It's just me, you know, getting to that more fine-grained EQ. And then I add the 3K hertz energy back up. I've heard reports of, you know, that being a little bit too much for some people who have this headphone. So I'd say dial that in to your preference. You know, always use your ears when you're doing EQ as well. And that sort of filled it in a little bit. So it, it evened out the tonal balance there between the fundamental and the harmonic uh, tone for, you know, vocals and things like that as well. So that really helped me, you know, appreciate this more. Uh, and then for the treble, I do pull it back just a little bit, but not that much. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's right at around 8K hertz where it's just a little bit hot at times. But again, the D8000 Pro is so detailed that it kind of gets away with that. So it's not as much of a problem. I still kind of pull that back just a little bit to make it a little bit more agreeable for wider a wider range of recordings. And so yeah, if you guys own one of these and you want to try out this EQ profile, let me know what you think because this is something that I've then measured afterwards on the Gross standardized measurement rig. And I'll show you guys what that looks like here. So you can see I've got it to generally match a little bit more closely with this Harman combined target that we have going on here. Remember that again, this 9K, 10K Hertz dip here, that's supposed to be there on this rig because this is where the concha interaction is with this particular anthropometric ear. But again, use your ears for this. Uh, you know, don't just rely on you know getting it to match the target. Make sure that it sounds good too, because you know we all have different preferences and stuff like that as well. Now, let me give my conclusion. Is the final D8000 Pro worth it? Well, I think of the high-end, crazy nanoscale flagship planar magnetic headphones that are out there, this is one of two that has a decent tonal balance. And I say decent because it's not perfect, but it is still decent for most genres and really good for some. Uh, I don't think this is the best headphone out there for jazz and classical and whatnot. I still think that crown belongs to the Hi-Fi Man Sesvara, but uh, you know, this is definitely competitive in that range. And you know, with these crazy high-end planar magnetic headphones, you know, $4,000 is a crazy amount of money to spend on headphones. You'll never see me saying, no, you have to buy the $4,000 headphone. You know, everything else is garbage. No, that's not the case. The, the big question, I think, with these is how much do you care about getting that last little bit of detail? Uh, because I do think it's competitive in the price range. You know, when you look at, like, what else is out there at around $4,000... Yeah, I mean, th this competes, you know, with everything else that's out there, um, and it beats many of them as far as, you know, the overall tonal balance is concerned. You know, I know there's people out there who think appropriately that if you're spending this kind of money, you should expect the headphone to be perfect, right? And I think for some people, again, specifically looking for a headphone that has this kind of tuning, it will be perfect. I think, you know, for those genres, this will be exactly that. But the problem is that not everybody has the same preferences and not everybody's listening to the same music. You know, there's a lot of different variables that go into this and it's really difficult to make a headphone that you can confidently say, yeah, this is going to be perfect for everybody. So, you know, if you're one of these people who really listens to the genres that I mentioned, like jazz and classical, and acoustic and stuff like that, then yeah, I think the D8000 Pro is definitely going to be competitive with other headphones that are in that same price range, right? Whether or not it's worth it, that's something, you know, only you can really decide, you know, if you have this kind of, you know, pocket change to throw around for a pair of headphones. So in conclusion, yes, I do recommend the Final Audio D8000 Pro. This is a fantastic sounding headphone. I absolutely love it. This is a headphone that makes me love my job. You know, I love getting to review these types of headphones that make me really go, whoa, like this is the level of, you know, technical performance is just on another level. And, you know, I was even saying to my friends like when I was listening to this off of the uh, Soundware P1 and the Ma Matrix Audio X Saber Pro this is like I was getting chills <laughs> with my music you know uh, music that I've heard 
for years, this headphone and that setup, it really, it, it gave me chills. So uh, yeah, I absolutely do recommend it if you can swing the $4,000 or $4,200, $4,300 to get it. But in any case, that does it for this review. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.